have fun yet talking about the idea of what goes up must come down and beating it to death. We've talked about maximizing the time or the height in the air by launching something straight up in the air at an angle of 90 degrees. And we've talked about maximizing the range by launching it at an angle of 45 degrees. But what if we launch it just above the ground at maybe one degree? What can we deduce then? Well, first I want to talk about radians. In case you don't know, halfway around a circle is pi radians, which of course is 180 degrees. So one radian, for example, would be 180 degrees divided by pi, which turns out to be approximately, and you can check this on a calculator, 57 degrees. Or one degree, which we want to talk about, using the same formula would be the reciprocal of this. In other words, pi over 180 radians. And that's a little bit less than 0 0.02. If I'm not mistaken, it's approximately 0 0.017 radians. Furthermore, the sine of theta, if theta is in radians, which is one reason why we need to do this, can be approximated by theta, the angle itself, minus the angle cubed over b factorial plus the angle to the fifth over 5 factorial minus, you guessed it, the angle to the 7 over 7 factorial, etc., etc. So for small angles, like 1 degree, that can be approximated as theta. Because when you raise theta to ever-increasing powers and divide by ever-increasing numbers, those terms will all be very small close to zero. So we'll use this, but before we do, I want you to watch a short video that was taken in Jamestown, Virginia, in the town that was rebuilt, so you could see what life was like back then, and then we'll pick it up on the other side. Yeah, if you all have any questions about anything, by all means, and uh, whenever my counterpart drifts over this way, we'll be doing a comparative demo between the both. Okay, so you notice that that very talented Native American archer was demonstrating his skills like they used back in the day when Jamestown was founded in Virginia around uh, the early 1600s, and way before that, of course. I estimate that the distance to the target was about 20 meters. On the diagram down here, that's represented by this distance. Here's the target. That's where the arrow was launched. This is not to scale. And I think the time was about a third of a second. So the horizontal speed on average, which is pretty much the launch speed because this angle is only one degree here, would be distance over time, approximately 20 divided by a third or 60 meters per second. Don't forget one degree, which is about what is exactly pi divided by 180 radians, would be approximately, if I use 3 for pi because this is all approximate, I get 1 60th of a radian. And therefore 2 theta, which I need in the range formula, will be double that, 2 over 60 or 1 30th of a radian. So the arrow was launched at one degree, went up in the air a little bit to its maximum height, came back down past the height at which it was launched, and then landed on the target over here somewhere. The range and the time in the air from here to here are represented by R and T. The height is this distance right here, represented by capital H. This was the original height of the launch, 
So let's calculate the time and the range from here to here, the maximum height from here to here, and then we'll calculate this distance over here as well. Because the arrow does not travel in a straight line to the target, it follows a parabola. So for the time, we get the formula up here, 2d sine theta over g. So that's 2 times 60. And we said before that for small angles, like 1 degree, the sine of theta is about the same as theta. So it would be 1 60th. That was the so-called Taylor expansion I showed you before the archery. And divided by g, let's use 10. We'll round off to 9.8. So the 60s cancel. I get about a fifth of a second. And that makes sense because the overall time was a third of a second. So that's about two thirds of that. Seems to make sense. The range is this formula. So 60 squared times the sine of 2 theta, which is 2 theta, a third, a 30th of a radian, divided by 10 again. So this 30 will cancel one of the 60s, leaving me with 60 times 2 from that cancellation. 120 over 10, that's about 12 meters. So if this was 20 meters, that's 12. Again, makes approximate sense. And the height, d squared sine squared theta over 2g, so 60 squared times theta, 1 over 60 again, but don't forget it's squared, over 20. Now, conveniently, those 60s all cancel, so I get 1 over 20, or 0 0.05 meters, which is about, or exactly, 5 centimeters. So this height is 5 centimeters. The arrow does not go up very much at all, which makes sense. Now, to fi finish off, let's calculate this displacement. So I'm going to just replace those numbers here. That was 0.2 seconds. This was 12 meters. This was, let's say, 5 centimeters. And we know that the vertical displacement is d1t plus 1 half a t squared. So what does that give us? Well, d1 is the vertical component of this velocity, or which is essentially the same as this one. So we'll use this as 60, because they're approximate. I get 60 times the sine of theta, which is 1 60th, times the time, which was 1 third of a second. And then if I use negative 10 for a, that's minus 5 times one third squared is one ninth. So I get one third, which is three ninths minus five ninths, negative two ninths, which is about negative um, 0.2 meters or negative 20 centimeters. So that's what this distance is right here. I, the minus sign, it's negative, but if I don't, it's just 20 centimeters. So there you have it, a very good example of projectile motion when the launch angle is almost zero. So please share this with as many people as you can, get them to subscribe, have them watch lots of my other videos, and we'll see you very soon. Take care.